right here. Listen to this great commutative property right here. I don't know, but doesn't it have like the little like parentheses? <laughs> You're close. That's the next one. That's the associative property. All right. So let's look at the commutative property. I want everybody to write down the commutative property means the order in which you do addition or subtraction really doesn't matter. All right. So what do I mean by that? If I said two plus three, does that equal three plus two? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's an example of commutative property. The order in which you add doesn't matter. Now, mathematically, we write X plus Y equals, what's an example using X plus Y? Look right up in their board. What would it be? X plus Y equals what? No. You are amazing. That is correct. Y plus X. Now, the commutative property holds true for addition. All right. Now, it also holds true for multiplication. So what would be an example for a commutative property for multiplication? Tell us, Luca. You are amazing. You are amazing. X times Y equals Y times X. So it does do, it does work with addition and uh, multiplication. Is, does it work with subtraction? Is three minus two the same as two minus three? Definitely not. Does it work with division? Is four divided by one equal one divided by four? Definitely not. All right. So that or those are the properties, commutative property. All right, of addition, commutative property of multiplication. Now, the associative property has to do with grouping. All right, so let's give an example. If I say two plus three, and then I add five, that's going to be the same as two plus, if I add three plus five first, is it the same answer? Yeah. Yes, it is. 2 plus 3 is 5, 5 plus 5 is 10, 3 plus 5 is 8, 8 plus 2 is 10. So that is an example of an associative property. And the associative property works with addition and what? And multiplication. That is correct. So let's give an example. X, Y, Z equals... X, open parentheses, Y, Z. That's an example of the associative property. Everybody with me on that? Okay. That's correct. It does it. That's right. And multiplication. Okay. Now, the additive identity. Does anybody remember about the additive identity? What number do you add and still remain the same? That's all that's telling you. All right. So if I take, for example, four and I add zero, I'm still going to get what? I'm still going to get zero or four. Wow, thank you. Four plus zero is definitely four. That's the additive identity. That's the additive identity. Now, I also can say A plus zero. What is A plus zero the same as? A, beautiful. All right. So this is a numerical representation, and this is an algebraic expression, all right, or example. Uh-oh, I said property here by accident. That's not the property. I want everybody to erase that or cross it out or not write property, just write multiplicative identity. The multiplicative identity. So who can tell me what the multiplicative identity is? 
change? Multiplying by zero, will it change? Yeah, because if I say five times zero, it doesn't say five. So what is the multiplicative identity? When you multiply by zero, nope, nope, not when you multiply by zero. Believe it or not, that's called the next one. What's the zero property? When you multiply by zero, you always get what? Zero. Yes, that's the, so we're going to jump down to the zero property. The zero property says anytime you multiply any number by zero, you're going to get what? Zero. All right. So if I say X times zero, I'm always going to get what? Zero. zero. Perfect. Now, come on. I need somebody to think about the multiplicative identity. Tell us. It stays the same. What are you going to multiply? Oh, one. One. There we go. The multiplicative identity is when you say, for example, six times one. What is it? Six times one. Six. So we say maybe X times one always equals what? X. There you have it. All right. Okay. So now what I want to do is I want to take a look at a few words you might come up with today. Uh, one is called a counterexample. Does anybody know what a counterexample is? Uh, you can write counterexample down. All right, can anybody tell me what is used for a counterexample? That's exactly right. That's exactly right. If I say, for example, even numbers are divisible by three, even numbers are divisible by three, give me a counterexample. All even numbers are divisible by, or all, yeah, all even numbers are divisible by three, give me an, a counterexample. 12 divided by 3 is an even number. 10 is not divisible by 3. Well, the other way around. 15 divided by 3 isn't a counterexample. But 15 is not even, right? So here, here's what I'm saying. All even numbers are divisible by three. All right. So, oh, who said 10 divided by three? Yeah, I'm sorry. Yours, they, you were 100% correct. No, no, he's correct. You're absolutely correct. He said 10 divided by three is a counterexample, and that is 100% correct. I'm sorry, I, I wasn't thinking. 10 divided by three. Why is that called a counterexample? Because it's even... And but it's not divisible by three. All right. So this right here, we're going to say is a conjecture. All right. This statement right here is a conjecture. All right. That's just a statement based on like incomplete information. All right. It's a statement based on incomplete information. All right. We think all even numbers are divisible by three. I wrote a, a, a counterexample to show that that wasn't true. Now, what if I said all even numbers are divisible by two? Is that conjecture true? Yes, that's true. Because no matter what even number you give me, I can divide it by what? I can divide it by two. Is anybody with me on that? All right. So a counterexample is just a, an example to show that your conjecture is not true. All right, so that's what you need to be working on. All right, now that you, what's the matter? Oh, the, the, the multiplicative identity, I want you to, yes. So put that down, the multiplicative identity. When you multiply by one, it doesn't change, okay? All right, now let's jump into the assignment, all right? Now that I've given you all that information, here we go. 
All right. Now, again, right up here, guys, all I did was I copied your page. So you really don't need your iPad out. You can if you want, but I'm going through this with you. All right. Is subtraction of whole numbers commutative? Is subtraction commutative, guys? No. All right. So we're definitely going to write no for number one. And then give me a counter example. Show me it's not true. Jackson, say it again. Three minus five. Does that equal? That's a counter example. That's good. It's not true. Is everybody good with that? Three minus five. This symbol right here means not equal, right? Three minus five does not equal five minus three. So it's not commutative. Is everybody happy with that explanation? Yeah, you can write whatever example you wanted. All right, 10 minus two is not equal to minus 10, whatever two numbers you subtract. All right. Okay, so now let's see who's, uh, let's just start with Kellen. Look up at number two. All right, look at your notes. If you don't remember, what is number two? What property? Look, look, eight times four equals four times eight. The order is different. So, yes. Yes, it's the commutative property. So you can write, you can abbreviate if you want, C-O-M-M, -M, but I want you to put it's the commutative property of multiplication. Is everybody okay with that? All right, Sarah, what's number three? All you got to do is look. We're going around the room. Everybody has to, every day, everybody's going to have to answer questions. So look it up in your notes. What is this? Six times one equals. Yes. And if you want, it's called, I don't care if you want, you can just abbreviate multiplicative, or you can just say multiplication property, or it's not a property, but what? Identity. Multiplicative identity. All right. Mm -hmm. But it has got to be identity, though. I want you to know it's an identity. That's the main thing. All right. Number four, Grant. There are you. Is it out of order? Yep, it's out of order, right? The nine and the three are out of order. So you did perfect. What operation is it? Um, there you go. Commuted property of addition. Yeah. Associative doesn't have parentheses here, does it? Wait, did I even do associative property? Yeah, we did example of associative property. There's no, there's no notice for the associative property. Here's, I want to make sure I'm clear on this, guys. Look, two, three, five, two, three, five. It's got to be in the same exact order in order for it to be associative property. You have made the parentheses are what's different. Commutative, any time the order is changed, it's commutative property. Okay. Now, Lydia, number five, what do you got? Me? Me, yes, go. Additive what? Yes, additive identity. All right. Anybody have a problem with that? You're adding zero. You remain the same. Okay. Everybody's good with that? Okay. Now, remember, don't be confused by the zero property. All right. The reason why I say don't be confused with the zero property is because the zero property is when you're multiplying. All right. The zero property is when you're multiplying. Okay. All right, Bennett, tell me. Number six is what?
Yes, it's also the community of property. But this time it's addition. Everybody's good with that? Mm -hmm. All right, now let's take a quick look at number seven. Obviously, you, Jackson. Associative. Yes, associative. Now, how do we know it's associative? Notice the order is the same, 619, 619. The order is the same. Does everybody agree with that? All right, except the parentheses are different. So that's why we say it's associative property of multiplication. Everybody's good with that? All right, <clears throat> now the easy part. All right, the easy part of the lesson today is just we're simplifying expressions. All right, can you add five and Y together? No. So they want you to realize that you can use the associative property to regroup these, but we're not going to do that because we're brilliant. Nine plus five plus Y. That's what they want you to do. All right, but you don't have to do that. You can just simply say, I know I can't add the five and the Y together, but I can add what two things together? Nine and five. Nine and five. And of course, nine plus five is what? Mm -hmm. So your answer, now we're going to get in the habit of writing our variable first. So I want everybody to write Y plus 14. All right, that's the answer. That's all. Simplifying means combining terms. Okay, so I'm going to let Sydney, you haven't gone yet, right? Mm -hmm. So you're on number nine, Sydney. Tell me what that is. You are amazing. K plus 11. Everybody's good with that? All right. Next, number 10. You, you, yes, sir. S plus 19. S plus 19 is perfect. S plus 19. We're all good with that, right? Thank you, Hunter. All right. Levi, I think, is up. Number 11. Um, it's 16. Oh, M plus 16. You are amazing. M plus 16. All right. Brooklyn, tell me about number 12. Yeah, B times 14. Yes. Now, in this case, though, listen to me. This is where it's a little strange. When you're multiplying, the number goes first. So I always just say 14D, not D14. All right. So with addition and subtraction, you put the variable first. But with multiplication, you put the variable second. Is everybody okay with that? All right. 13. Who's up? Isaac, are you up? I think you're up. You're on 13. Um, Z times or we write what first? What? Write the number first for multiplication. So what oh, would that be? Sorry. Yeah, but we would just say 33Z. Oh. All right. Oh. Not for multiplication. You had to be listening. All right. Hampton. Yeah. All right, give me an encounter example for number 14. Three equals six. Wow, very smart, buddy. Right? That was good. Three plus three equals six. That's a counter example. So we say this is automatically what? False. Okay. Your conjecture is false. You thought the sum of two odd numbers is always odd. I don't... Uh, yeah, I think it's a true and false statement. Yeah. Okay. All right, Talbot. Why? Right, so give me an example. Give me two odd numbers. Oh, two numbers, so times seven and three. Yep, seven times three equals? Seven times three equals one. Exactly. And 21 is odd, right? Well, it says product, right? Do you agree with that? Product. All good questions. All right, Miss Madeline. Um, division of small numbers is easy. Yes or no? Uh, we'll get, tell me two numbers to divide. 12, 12 divided by 3. 
Does that equal three divided by 12? No, no definitely no. not. So false. And that was your counter example. All right. Luca, all multiples of three are odd. Um, no. Definitely false. Give me an example. 12. 12 is a multiple of three and it's even. Beautiful. All right. And last one over here. Chase, what's the property for 18? Oh, the property? Yeah, what property? Zero plus 14 equals 14. Nope. Zero property is when you multiply by zero. When you add zero, it's called a what? Look at your notes. Additive what? Yes, additive identity. Does everybody agree that was kind of easy, right? Mm -hmm. You just have to kind of remember the properties. That's hard. All right, we're going to practice. All right, that's why you have your notes. Flip back on your notes. Additive identity. I told you to change that. I made a typo up there. All right, I wanted you to change it to additive identity, not multiplicative property. You with me? Mm -hmm. I, oh. Oh. I told you that. All right. Now, I think I'm good for today. So that means you guys got to finish up your homework, right? And let's look at the time just to make sure I don't mess up again. So St. John's information schedule. Today is Tuesday. We're fifth period. We get out at 12, 11. You got 11 minutes to finish. And I believe some of you can get that done. All right. So please get your work done right now. All right. Get it done. What would you have to go to? It's a more, more, more than seven. Did you not write it? Or seven there? No.